Okay, this is a short history of computers and introduction to programming. <clears throat> As usual, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. You should pause the video whenever you want to look at something more detail. Um, you don't have to look, just let it wash over you. You know, stop and read what's on, on the screen. Okay, so prior to 1945, computer was a job title. Notice it's all women here. Um, women were the original computers. They did things by hand. Uh, software was really originally written by women. Hardware was a man's job, and software was the women's job. And that's, that switched a little bit as software became more and more lucrative to, uh, as a career. So why was why were computers developed? Um, World War II um, needed to do uh, missile trajectories and ballistics tables. Um, a 60-second trajectory, something that you, you, know, you shot off, it took a minute to hit, required 20 hours for, for that room full of women to calculate out what the angle should be and the wind and all you know, elevation, all those things, and and what how to how to shoot it. So that took 20 hours to compute with a, with, the, with just a mechanical calculator. Um, so electromechanical equipment sped up the calculations. Uh, the first computers were electromechanical; they weren't digital yet. Um, fully electronic computers made things a lot faster l later on. <clears throat> um, 60 second trajectory. Uh, once they got an electromechanical equipment in World War II, it took about 30 seconds instead of 20 hours. That was a huge improvement. <clears throat> of course, that's compared to today. Same trajectory, calculate less than one second in, on, on your basic phone. So things are so much faster now. Um, the first big computer in the U.S. was ENIAC. Um, notice this whole room here is, is the computer. Um, everything inside here, inside these cabinets, is where the computer is. Um, and these are just... I.O. basically. So the computer is this whole room. Um, ENIAC stood for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. It was secret until 1946. Didn't want people to, didn't want the, uh, the, the enemy to know we had it. And you had to rewire it for each problem. It, it was a mechanical. You had to, had to wire things up um, for if statements and things like that. Um, it was not programmable. It was not reproducible. It was 100 feet long all the way around there. Well, weighed 30 tons, had 18,000 tubes in it, little vacuum tubes, and they would go out a lot. So people are always replacing the tubes. 150 kilowatts, faster than anything up to then. So as, as slow as this was, and as huge as it was, it was much faster than anything up to that point. And it was still slow compared to, to today. Um, in 1995, a company said, hey, we'll, we'll, pick, we'll put the... Uh, ENIAC capabilities all on a chip. So si size of a dime, smaller than a dime, that's what that whole room could do. Um, one chip could do that, what was in that whole room there. This kind of, very interesting. <clears throat> Early mainframe computers, um, idea caught on quickly because it saved time, right? Save, save uh, money. Didn't have to hire all, all those women to do, do calculations. Um, the first commercial was Univac. Um, cost $1 million in 1951 equivalent of 10 million or more today. And 46 systems were installed in 1957. Um, IBM started the uh, IBM 701, 19 were installed in the early 50s, 140 were installed in the, in the 50s later, and then 2000 were installed right around 1960s. And then the IBM 1401, 10,000 were installed in the uh, early, early 60s. I mean, so, so you can see it, it was starting to catch on faster uh, more and more. Um, Grace Hopper was an early, early, early pioneer. Uh, she wrote COBOL. Um, she was an early pioneer in computer science, something that you should all uh, look up. There's a YouTube video here. You look, she was on talk shows all, all the time later on in her life. Um, she was a brilliant woman and an early pioneer, so someone you should definitely know, know about. Uh, the first driver of growth was miniaturization. Um, things got smaller, cheaper, more reliable. And as they got smaller and smaller, things got faster. So as... Uh, electricity is almost as fast as light, not quite, but almost. And the shorter the distance, the faster the machine. So the smaller things were, the faster things were. A nanosecond takes light or electricity to go about 11.8 inches. So about that, that long is how long it takes for a nanosecond for information to travel. It's not instantaneous. It's still, it's still uh, um, not light speed. Okay, um, here's here's the first bug that uh, Grace Hopper documented in that big huge computer. Um, the first bug was you know shorted out some circuits, and she had to go in there and pull it out, and 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 she taped it to her report and said first actual case of bug being found. Um, 
and and uh, had had to fix the uh, the, the fi fix program by taking out, out the bug. This is actually in the Smithsonian now. Um, speed. Here's a bunch. So you could pause this. You want to take take a look at this. Memory, uh, memory core. Um, Magnet core was just a few kilobytes. Now your phone has way more than that. Um, punch cards, magnetic tape. So this is external memory now to the computer. Um, first magnetic disk storage system in the early in the mid 50s or so. Provided random access. Before then, it was all sequential access. You had to access the first, the second, the third. You know, like a playlist. You had to had to do it one, two, three, four, five in order to get to the sixth. Six one. Um, now you could go directly to six. You could jump right to six. And that was a big deal to be able to go, oh, I could go directly to six or, or directly to 10,000. I'm having to read all 10,000 items before that. <clears throat> Five megabytes, not very much space, but it, it took as much space as two refrigerators. That's how, how, how big the, the, the memory was back then. And that was a huge amount of memory for, for what they had back then. Humongous. Um, I remember it was big when I first started. I got computers early 80s. I got my first laptop and it had a, had a 10 megabyte hard drive. Um, and it was huge. It was very expensive, too. Memory was back then. Memory growth. Core memory, limited growth memory. Disk based storage grew, grew quickly. Um, RAM. 64K of RAM. The 1960s mainframe just had 64K of RAM. Hardly anything. 1984, the one megabyte RAM chip. I remember when this came out. It was really exciting and really expensive. I, there's no way I, I could buy one. It was too expensive to get. It was just one megabyte. So here's the kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes. So memories get bigger, bigger, and bigger. Oh, yottabytes. Okay, so binary data representation. All values stored as binary numbers. So the smallest unit is one bit. Everything in your computer is a number, zero or one. That's it. There are no pictures in your computer. There is no music in your computer. Um, it's all zeros and ones, everything. If you open up your computer, all you're going to find are zeros and ones in memory. Software translates that into pictures that you can see on a screen and displays it for you. Or it translates the zeros and ones into sound that then was played on a speaker that you can now hear in your phone. So that's a huge thing to understand. There are no pictures in your phone or in a computer. There's no, no, no music in your phone. Okay, so bytes. You got bits. Then you have bytes. A byte is eight bits. Um, a byte represents ASCII character of an integer between 0 and 255. Um, ASCII is something that you're going to know about um, um, if you're going to be a computer scientist at all. Binary is basically base 2, zeros and 1s. It's all there is. So just everything can be is and everything is defined as zeros and 1s in the computer. So 0, base 10, is 0 and base 2 also. A 1 is a 1. A 2, though, there is no 2 in base 10 base 2, so it becomes 1, 0. You see how that, that carries over. So 3 is now adds a 1 to it. 4 is going to add a 1 to that and becomes 0, 1, 0, 0. So that's a 4. 5 is 0, 1. Another way to look at it is you take the rightmost digit. 1 times 1 is 10. 2, 4, 8. So it's 1, 2, 4, 8. So there's 0, 8s. 0, 8s. There's 1, 4, 0, 2s, and 1, 1. So there's 1, 4, and 1, 1. So that's a 5. That's another way to, to, to take a look at it. So binary is something that you think, oh, I'll, I'll never have to do that. If you're a computer scientist, you are. You are going to have to take a look at it. You have to understand it. Um, you're going to be using this for various things. And the more scientific programming you do, the more you'll need to know about binary. ASCII, many control codes drive teletypes. There's ASCII codes that are from way back that drive teletypes, which we don't even really have anymore. That do line feed, you know, chunk, 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 the, 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 the printer paper up, chunk, 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 things like that. So that's still in the ASCII codes. Um, new lines, all those kind of things, which are still, still used. But there's numbers, letters, punctuation. And so um, ASCII 48 is zero. In binary, it's 1100000. And so if you want to know what 9 is, it's 57 in ASCII is a 9. And this represents 57. Binary is kind of cumbersome for humans. We, we don't do it very well. So we do group bits by 4, um, nibbles. So each nibble contains a value, 0 through 15. 0, 9, 8, 4. So you need to go through this and see how this is an E. These four bytes are an F. This is a 2. That's an A. So we can remember EF2A much better than 
1110111100010. So we can remember the EF2A is much easier. So just a way to trans translate it. What else can we put in binary? Images, sound, video, anything that can be encoded. Perhaps most significantly, programming instructions. Okay, that's it for this first part. Uh, we'll continue on the next for part two.